hey guys welcome back to my channel i am your girl isa too thank you so much for watching me from wherever you're watching me from and do not forget that if you're new here you need to click the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so you get more information about videos i'll be uploading and if you've been here from the beginning thank you so much for watching me and thank you so much for your support i really do appreciate it today is a special day and um, i'm bringing you this special interview because i have had tons and tons of emails asking about business registration in the Gambia and you know what I do I try to get the information firsthand to ensure that there are no confusions and also you get the information from the people that have the you know the right information to give so today I am here with Alassane Job Alassane Job is the assistant um, registrar of companies at the Attorney General's office that um, Attorney General's Chambers and the Ministry of Justice thank you so much for joining us Alassane you're welcome I'm grateful yeah, it's really a pleasure to have him here because he has a busy schedule but as soon as I contacted him to have the interview, he was very open to give us the special interview and I want to say thank you so much for taking out the Highly time. Highly appreciate it. You're welcome. Right, so we go same, right, right down, we dig into the questions. I remember posting and asking all of you about questions you wanted answers to and um, those, are, those questions have been pinned down and those are the questions Alassane is going to be answering but there were specific questions that some of you wrote down that has not to do with his office and those questions have been taken out but i'm going to try my best to ensure that i get to those offices that have the answers to those particular questions that wouldn't be answered today and um the head of those offices will be able to answer your questions so we just go down to all the questions that are related to this particular department and alas will do justice to some of your questions so right. first alas before we start please tell us about yourself let um the subscribers be able to understand who you are and what you do all right Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure always to talk to the public about what we do as a public office. I think people have a right to know certain information or certain issues that are governing their country. My name is Alassane Job. Um, I studied at the University of the Gambia. I studied law and then proceeded to do my bar at the Gambia Law School where I graduated in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I've been working at the Ministry of Justice for 10 years now. Wow. Yeah, so I rose through the ranks from an intern to a legal clerk and then I finished my studies. I was promoted as the assistant registrar of companies. I've been working at the companies division over the past 10 years when I've been at the ministry. So I've, I've, I have quite a lot of experience in registering business from being an intern to a clerk to now um, heading this office. Of course, the registrar of companies is the overall head. He's in Banjo. Okay. So, yeah, he's the one heading the office, the company's registry in Banyu, and this is a sub-office of that one. Okay. So I am heading this sub-office, uh, which is here at KMC, uh, because uh, we found the need to establish an office in this area, because most of the businesses in, this, in the country are dominated in the KMC region. Yeah. So to ease the pressure in the office in Banyu, we decided to open this office so that people who have businesses in this area can come here and do their registration instead of going all the way, to, all Banyu. way to Banyu. Yeah, and I have a... Uh, Six staff whom I'm supervising here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's that's really impressive, Alas, and yeah. I must say it's very very impressive. Thank so you. um, let's talk about the single business window registration. I know that that started a um, few years ago, and it has actually made it very easy for Gambians and non-Gambians alike to register their businesses without so much headache. Yeah. So let's talk about that. What's its its, its functions and also the rules? All right. The single window business registry, as the name implies. The operative, the main words there are single window. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about single window, um, um, in 2013, a Business Registration Act was passed and a Companies Act. So, the purpose of these laws were to bring together, especially the Single Window Business Registration Act, was to bring together all the government agencies that are involved in business setup in the Gambia. Prior to 2013, um, if you want to register a business, for instance, you need to go to GRA, make a tax deposit, mm -hmm. and then come to the Ministry of Justice, get your registration, go to the area council, get your trade license, go to Social Security. If you have staff, you have to register with them. And then you have to go back to GRA and be paying taxes. So we thought of um, that it was necessary to bring together under one roof all of these offices, mm -hmm. so that instead of coming to justice and then you go to trade license, you go to social security, you go to GRE, you can come under one office and then get all of these things done, get your registration done and then simultaneously you'd also do all these other payments that you need to do with other offices. That was the whole concept of why the single window came into place. 
when we started quite well, um, all the, we had a GRE officer here, we have a, a social security officer here, and a trade license officer here. Okay. But as time went on, um, we hadn't realized this objective. In the office in Banyo, we have a GRE officer, and for us here, we have a trade license office okay. right, right next to us here. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole object of the single window. And what we do, we are the government agency responsible for registering businesses and companies and corporate bodies in general. So when we talk about corporate bodies, it involves partnerships and charitable organizations and even foreign companies. Foreign companies are companies that are incorporated outside the Gambia, but they want to do business okay. in the Gambia. Those are foreign companies. So not only registering them, but ensuring that they comply with the relevant laws, the Companies Act and the Single Window Business Registration Act, and ensure that they file their returns, they register and then they file their returns, and then they file all necessary changes. Mm -hmm. So we are basically there to supervise them and give them business certificates. That's basically the mandate of the Single Window Business Registry. Yeah. That's that's perfect, and I'm also aware because I've registered one or two businesses here in this particular <coughs> office, and I'm aware that there are different types of businesses. We have the the sole proprietary, we have the partnership, we have charitable organizations. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the process of registering this particular businesses. What documentations are needed, and what are the differences when it comes to registrations? Right, um, as you rightly said, we have um, we register four different entities here. Mm -hmm. Three of them are strictly for business. Okay. The fourth one is not for business purposes. That one is a charitable organization. Okay. Now, the most common one is the single window business registry or sole proprietorship mm -hmm. or an individual business. So this is a business that is owned, run and managed by one person only. Okay. It's the most common form of business. All of these shops you're seeing around Jimpex, Caraba Avenue, most of them are single window, meaning they are owned by one person only. Mm -hmm. Uh, to register this one is pretty simple and straightforward. All you need is a copy of your ID and then your TIN number and the registration fee is a flat fee of $500 only. Okay. Regardless. $500 that is, um, in, in dollars? Dollars, um, is $500. Yeah, I just want to convert it for subscribers who are watching that are okay. not. I think $50 is, is um, $1 is equates to... No, one dollar equates to fifty dollars. So that should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars. Ten dollars, yes. right? I'm very bad at maths. So <laughs> you know that. Right. So basically, that's just it's very simple and straightforward and cheap. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether you are a Gambian or not, you still pay five hundred dollars. Okay, that's that's good news. Yes, even if you are a non-Gambian, you want to do a business, it's owned by you only. You pay only five hundred for the registration. Okay. Of course, as a non-Gambian, there are other taxes that you might pay. But that one has nothing to do with it. That one is uh, those taxes are paid at GRE, yeah, like payroll tax, if okay. you are non-Gambian. So basically, that's how to register a sole proprietor. The other one is the partnership business. So a partnership business is a business that two or more people can come together and form. Mm -hmm. That one also is quite common. Um, so for that one, you need a partnership agreement. You have to see a lawyer to draft a partnership agreement for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then that's the partnership agreement that you bring here and then we register it for you and give you a certificate. So the registration fee for that one approximately is $7,000. 7000 that should be about um, 100 and less than $50. Let's say let's just say around one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Less a little bit less than that. Right. So that that's the fee to register a partnership business. So a partnership up to two up to um, um, fifty people can come together and okay. do that kind of business. Like it can be mostly it's done by friends who mm -hmm. have some little money want to invest in something. They can come together and form that one. Okay. But it's always advisable to see a lawyer to draft this document for you because the agreement entails everything about the business, who are the partners, how the profit is going to be shared, shared who is responsible for the management, who is which bank are you going to who are going to be the signatures. All of these things have to be in a legal document that will bind the partners. Mm -hmm. So that one is very important. So the other one is the limited liability company, very common very common most of these big hotels the yeah. restaurants they are limited liability companies so that one also two or more people can come together and form a limited liability company so it's always advisable if you are investing a lot of money in a business to go for a limited liability really company good, yeah. but as the name implies your liability is limited to the, to just the, business. the exit no to the unpaid amount of okay. the share capital that the partners have contributed okay Whereas in the partnership business, there is unlimited liability, meaning whatever money the partners invest, if the business runs into any financial difficulties tomorrow, the partners will be jointly liable for whatever happens to the business, mm. including their even own personal assets may be used wow. to set up whatever issues they have financially. Whereas in limited liability company, 
the shareholders are distinct from the company itself. Whatever happens, it happens to the company. Whatever financial um, constraints the company incurs, it is limited to the company. Mm -hmm. The shareholders personally will never be held liable for whatever happens to the business. Okay. That's why most people will want to go for that one or rather than the, the partnership. partnership business. So also that one is very common. So for that one also you need a legal document called a memorandum on articles of association, mm -hmm. which generally is advice <coughs> we advise you to see a lawyer to draft it for you. Even though recently we've seen quite a number of people prepare it for themselves. Okay. Um, sometimes most people that prepare for themselves it doesn't comply with the law so we have to tell them go back and forth so mm -hmm. it's advisable to see a lawyer to draft this thing for you and then that's what you bring here and pay uh, the registration fee is thousand but the incorporation fee because the companies are incorporated mm -hmm. it differs okay. it depends on the share capital of the company so we have a breakdown from a share capital of zero to five hundred thousand dollars you pay ten thousand here for incorporation fee if it is from 500,000 to 1 million, you pay 15,000. 15, 1 million to 10 million, 20,000. Above 10 million, 25,000. So the higher the capital, the uh, more you will pay here pay for pay. registration. Okay. Yeah, so most startups, they go with the smallest one, which is 10,000. So we can say the standard fee for registering a it's company 10, in the Gambia is 11,000. The 10,000 is the incorporation fee, the thousand dollars is the registration fee. So, so that making 11,000. Like, um, $200 plus. Um, $20, that's $220. Yeah, you do the math. <laughs> but let me just yes. make something very clear. In the partnership and the uh, company, it's very important before you even start anything to do uh, what we call a name reservation. Mm -hmm. So a name reservation means you have to come to the office and fill a form okay. and put the name of the business that you want to put there. And then we need to check it through our system mm -hmm. to ensure that the name you want to use does not exist yeah. and is not similar to an existing one. Oh. They don't have to be similar so as to cause confusion. So this name reservation is 500. It's very important to do that because we have a number of scenarios where people will come and complain that they have registered their business and they see somebody with another with similar name. name. So to avoid that, you have to come and reserve the name. You have to give you the certificate. Okay. And there are certain words also that we don't accept. Mm -hmm. Like Gambia, we don't allow people to use Gambia in front of the name of their mm -hmm. businesses. Ah. National, international. So those are restricted words. So that's why when you come, you need to advise you on certain words that you cannot use. So it's very important to do a name reservation. Okay, yeah. The last one is the charitable organization. This one is not for profit. Okay. So uh, people who have similar idea or similar objective to pursue certain things, like to promote health, to promote or to, to advocate against gender-based violence, these uh, things are registered as charitable foundations and they need to draft a uh, bylaws or constitution. That's what they present here and pay $2,000 for the registration fee. $2,000, that's um, $40. $40, yes, for charitable foundations and organizations. In this pandemic, we have registered quite a number of them for those who want to help people during that are during the pandemic, yeah. Okay, so um, just, just to go back to <coughs> the last point, that you made about um, what was it? Okay, we'll come back to that. It might yeah. come to my head. I think it just fly, uh, fly out. Okay, yes. The the names that you said have restriction, like yes. international, national. What? Just give us two or three words that you feel that maybe are accepted to be used in the names. There are certain we don't advise people on which names to use. They have the freedom to use to choose the names that they want to use. But also the law provides for certain words that are generally not accepted, like Gambia, mm -hmm. international or national. Yeah. Like those, if you want to use Gambia something as the name of the business, that would suggest like it's the government that owns yeah, that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't allow any individual to use the word yeah. Gambia or national. Those are only allowed for state-owned uh, companies. We have other restricted words like international, investment. Mm -hmm. Those are restricted words. So if you want to use those kind of words, you have to come and seek the approval of the register. You have to write to the office. Mm -hmm and explain, give reasons why you want to use those words. You have to show reasons like your business is of an international nature or you're investing because some people just abuse names. You see somebody will be selling small <laughs> for guy shop at the, and then they want to use international fashion company yes. limited to make the name so big whereas they're just dealing in a small corner yeah. shop. Yeah. So that's why we have to ensure that names, sometimes you use reflects actually what, what you are doing on the ground. So those are a few of the words that we don't accept. That's why the name reservation is very important so to do before you even start talking about starting a business. 
Perfect. So um, we go to the next question, and that has to do with um, people in the diaspora who wants to move to the Gambia to start businesses. And I, I have a lot of these people who I know, they send me emails all the time asking questions about if the registration uh, process is different, do they require other documentations. I know you answered that before when answering um, the how to register the different businesses, <coughs> talking about if it, if you're, even if you're non-Gambian, you still pay the same amount. But let's just go over that again. I, do, do people in the diaspora, especially non-Gambians, have to pay um, a different fees to register their businesses? Do they require other documents other than the particular documents that are supposed to be provided? Not necessarily. It's all the same. Okay. Whether you are in the diaspora or you're here, all you need is a national ID card. The issue we have with most people in the diaspora is they have expired IDs. Uh -huh. They've not been in the Gambia for a long time. But they have their passports, mm -hmm. Gambian passport, which they can just send over and then they copy of their tin card, which they can, it can be processed for them even if they are not here. Okay. And then they just pay the same fee. Even if you are a non-Gambian, you pay the same registration fee. But it's very important to also say that even though the registration fee is flat for Gambians and non-Gambians, mm -hmm. but when it comes to paying taxes, non-Gambians tend to uh, pay payroll tax, okay. are tax payable by non-Gambians who are um, um, residing in the Gambia and doing business. They pay payroll tax at GRA. Okay. So that's where the uh, difference comes in, but not in terms of registration. All right. So just to be clear, GRA means the Gambia Revenue, Gambia Revenue Authority. Gambia Revenue Authority, yes. Yes. So um, that means, of, like, talking about the permits and everything, that also has to do with, because um, they ask... Yes, for us, here, for us here, if you are a non-Gambian and you come to the Gambia to do business, mm -hmm. Because the immigration will give you a permit. They give you either a residential permit or business permit. So you okay. have to show us that permit that First. you are given then before we register you. Yes. Oh, perfect. Yes. That, that, it's good that that's clear. So you need to get a business or residential permit from the immigration department, which you will bring here and have your business registered. So it's good that that's very clear. So let's talk about the duration. Um, how long does the process take when you apply um, or when you come here to register your business? How long does it take you to get your certificate? Well, if all the documents requested that are, for, are submitted to the office, it takes not more than 48 hours. Okay. Yes, for sole proprietorships, individual businesses, those ones take a day. Okay. Because for those ones are uh, simple and easy, pretty, pretty straightforward. There is no legal document there. But for the companies and the partnership, because you have to attach the memorandum and these legal documents, you have to check them and so that they are in line with the with the with the with the laws. So yeah. those ones might take 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Yes, but at most, uh, any registration that is submitted will be completed within at most two days. Okay. So we also have a similar question here where somebody is asking um, if there are incentives for specific industries and what percentage of revenue from the business is payable for taxes. I think that also has to go to GRA. Yes, what and if, if there are any specific incentives for businesses, those ones are under GAIPA. GAIPA, GAIPA okay. usually all these year projects that assist youths. Most of the people that actually come to register here is because of these special incentives. Mm. So most of the time you see on the newspapers or adverts that they are looking for people to apply for certain grants or yeah. loans. Yeah. And then they would always, the first requirement is that you have to register a business. Mm. Because registration is very important. The registration of the business is like the birth certificate of your business. It shows yeah. that you have a legal business in the Gambia. Right, yeah. And it's illegal to operate a business without registering. As for the percentage payable to taxes, that one, I'll leave it to GRA to GRA, answer that yes. one. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, um, also, I, you obviously already talked about the loans and opportunities that are available. And that is where I would sort of like recommend the YEP, that is the Youth Empowerment Project, and also the Startup Incubator. Yes. I think they have actually been doing a really great job in assisting people to start businesses from scratch all the way up. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, we'll just have to. So, these are some things you should look at if you're looking at um, getting grants and also special incentives incentives to start a business. So um, someone also asked here that what about schools? Is there a different process needed or documentations needed to start to register a school? Um, for schools, um, that one is not under our purview. Usually okay. they go to the relevant ministry, if, if either Ministry of Higher Education or Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. Okay. What we register here are tertiary institutions. Okay. Tertiary institutions that are run for business purposes, like mm -hmm. of Tutors, for example. Ah. Those are tertiary institutions that we register here. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we register daycare. Some people run daycare for business purposes. Yes, yes. So for those ones, um, for, for, for the other strict schools, academic institutions like school setup, mm -hmm. they go to NACA, National Accreditation, I don't know, National Agency for, they accredit them, they give them a certifi yeah. certificate there. That's where they uh, get their accreditation, and then they go to the Ministry of 
higher education. But schools in the strict sense, we don't register them. Here. Okay, perfect. So um, let's also talk about the challenges when it comes to general challenges of the business fair in the Gambia. Because um, I know that the government has been doing their best to see how best it's easier for startups to register, just as you've explained um, earlier. But um, we still do have challenges. What's, what are some of these challenges you'll be able to pinpoint and highlight? Well, from my experience um, registering businesses and sometimes giving advice to some of these youths that come to set up, mm -hmm. sometimes they would want advice as to what form of business they really want. I think um, there's a general problem here that most people, some people have money, <coughs> they want to invest but they don't know where to invest it. So I think Gambia people just see some people doing a certain activity and they're successful. They all want to follow that follow, path yeah. without knowing how that person actually started. So most people, and also the problem I think most businesses face here is that you have money, you want to invest in business, but you haven't employed the right people, the people who can run the business for you. Yeah. So if you want to do everything for yourself, you don't have the relevant experience. Most of the time we register companies here, partnership businesses, friends come together. One year, two years down the line, they come back to dissolve it because mm. they couldn't go. Sometimes they have problems in terms of uh, internal problems among themselves. Yeah. So that's why it's important to have this, um, how do I call it? When you have a business, you have to remove things like your family or certain people. If they don't have the experience, they don't have the experience. Yeah. Employ people who can manage the business for you. That's why the concept of directors in a company is very important. So in a company, you are the shareholders, you are the ones who invest your money, but you appoint directors who are knowledgeable in that area to run the business for you. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, it's lack of trust or what. People always tend to do everything for themselves, for themselves here. Yeah. And lack of proper keeping of records is also a challenge for most businesses here. We also face that challenge here because for companies, when you are filing returns, you need to submit copies of your financial statements for last year, for the previous year. Mm -hmm. Most businesses here, they don't even know what this means. They don't keep proper records. They just spend anyhow, invest here anyhow. If you don't do that, I don't even know how you will know whether your business is making profit or not. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also a challenge that most of the time, if you don't have that, you will not know whether your business is doing well, well or not, not yeah. because you need financial statements that you need to even submit here when you um, 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 file your returns for the following year. Mm -hmm. So you just start the business, you just do it anyhow, you bring your sister, put him there, you just run it anyhow, <laughs> you will have problems. Yes. So I always advise youths when they come here that this is what they want to do, that are you experienced in that particular, do you know how to do it? employ people and then you pay them and then they manage it for you. You can go ahead and do your other work that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So that's also a challenge. And the other challenge also from an administrative point of view is that most people here have businesses they know they should register, but they don't bother to register it. They wait until something happens. The business certificate that we issue here is so important that even if you don't go out and start following people to come and register, they will come one day or not. Yeah, to come. If you want to travel for to go to the embassy for interview, what's your occupation? You tell them you're a business. They need evidence to show that you're doing business. You yeah. need your business certificate. If you haven't registered, know that you're you guaranteed be. that they will not give you a visa. Mm -hmm. These grants and loans that the government gives, yet gives, the first criteria is that you must register. Yes. If you open a bank account, the first criteria is you must register your business. Mm -hmm. Even if the government advertises for tender, you want to apply for a particular tender, you still have, you still to, have to register. So that's why for us here, we don't, we don't, we don't even bother <laughs> going. They will come. One day or not, they will come because they need the certificate so much for so many purposes. So most of the time, by the time they come, it's already late. late yeah. So that's why it's always advisable. If you have a business and you're doing it, just come and register it for just $500. Mm -hmm. And then you just proceed. And then whenever you need a document, it's already there. Yeah. But most people come here late and then they start rushing and saying, I need this today, 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 because of one particular tender I have to apply. Whereas you could have done it a long time. That's a problem we face as administrators. Mm -hmm.